Hello and welcome to the Listening Post unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing Elac's brand new subwoofer, the PS350. This is part of their new Varo range. It's a performance subwoofer, it's budget priced and it's absolutely ginormous as you can see. 12 inch drive unit and like the model number suggests this is the the PS350. They do a littler one, a 10 inch, and it's called the 250. Now the 350 is 350 watts, peaking to about 700 with uh, Elax Bash amplification. The 250 is 250 watts, and they do a much bigger one, the 500. And guess what? It's 500 watts, peaking at 1000. So this is middle of the range, and it's absolutely stunning. Uh, the, it'll deliver 108 dB, and it's got an awesome app for control and setup. And that's actually part of the reason I'm so proud of this product. The app is really good. Uh, I don't know, it's like in their third or fourth generation now. So they've certainly done a good job. But nevertheless, the app allows you from the convenience of your sitting position to be able to dial into all of the setups associated with the subwoofer and get the most out of it from the comfort of your living room chair. Rather than having to do the traditional way, which is jump up, make a quick setting, sit back down, uh, try and hear if it's better or worse, jump back up, change a setting. Well, it's all done so easily and quickly with an app nowadays. Okay, so the packaging. Look, it's pretty muted, really. It's a brown paper box with some screen printing on the side. I mean, obviously, it talks about ELAC. Uh, we've got the PS350 and the fact that this one's black, although it's only available in black in New Zealand. Um, here we've got one of those sort of VU meters implying the uh, volume it will create, and again it's 108 dB. Got a bit more information about the wattage and other things along those lines. By the way, frequency response down to 24 Hz. Now that's anechoically chamber tested. It's always a little bit better in your home. So it's awesome to see that they've even been conservative with some of the ratings that most subwoofer manufacturers just try and puff up a little bit. Okay, there's a line drawing associated with the subwoofer and with that, look, see these little, oh, you'll see, and please, with the close-ups, this little ridging around the um, annulus is part of its ability uh, to bring those frequencies into the room accurately. Of course the app control and Bluetooth and their bash amplifier. Now, on both ends, we've got scannable information associated with the model and serial numbers, along with some basic freight information and uh, electrical compliance, and emulation of exactly the same on this side, and then again on the end. Now, opening these is really, really straightforward. It's a simple enough process. It's only been sort of factory sealed with some, some tape, so it's very, very straightforward to get this open. Now, there's two methods of unboxing things of this physical size. Today, what I'm going to do is the safest, which is to roll it over and take the box off the subwoofer, rather than the subwoofer out of the box. Okay. And then slide this off carefully. And then... Right. Now, weirdly, this is exactly the way Elac expected you to unbox it. Because here now, at the bottom, which is now the top, we see the accessories. Now, it's a simple cardboard slip with a little bit of information associated what's coming and going. And, and of course, a reminder to use the app for its control. Sort of tar code in the middle of the um, user manual is the New Zealand IEC power cord. A big desiccant bag to keep it dry, basic placement information, hookup information, and a, a comprehensive little brochure, along with the huge spikes. Um, the spikes themselves are excellent, and of course, are designed to pin this subwoofer down all the way through your carpet and onto the hard surface underneath. Now, the subwoofer also has, and again, you'll see that, um, also has some rubber pads on the bottom of the subwoofer. So if it's sitting on a hardwood or a tiled floor, it's not going to chatter or vibrate. Nevertheless, awesome to see that they've invested in such heavyweight, good quality spikes as well. And at this point, look, there's just a little bit of closed cell foam to support and stop the accessories from marking this, this subwoofer. And a big piece of polystyrene to keep it 
intact and freight. Now off to one side is the uh, grills for the subwoofer. Now I make a big point about some of the small things when it comes to packaging and here's one of them. This is taped closed but ELAC know that most people will open this with a craft knife and so what they've done is, and just a tiny investment, is that they've uh, ensured that the cardboard uh, uh, sort of has a little flap, a little um, it folds over itself, so that if you run a knife across this, at no point can you cut the grill in behind. So just those little things, they're really awesome as far as being able to think through the end result once this product has been purchased and it's being set up in your living room. Now, given the fact that this is a 12 inch subwoofer, I think you understand that this grill is huge. They've invested in some excellent outrigger sort of feet with pegs to ensure that no matter what the excursion of the woofer, it's not going to touch and vibrate the grill. Also, you can see the bracing that is designed to stretch that grill to ensure that it's not going to sort of, um, you know, get a nice little finish, but also acoustically transparent in the middle. Spinning it around, we see a centralized ELAC logo, and it's lovely to see that sort of uh, two-tone brand icon uh, that we're all used to now. Now this is the uh, top of the subwoofer, so the easiest next process is to carefully roll it onto its top and then get rid of the last of the polystyrene packaging. Opening the uh, protective bag, we'll see the feet which we'll discuss in a moment, and rolling it over. Spinning it round, we get to see the subwoofer for the first time. Now bearing in mind, this thing is heavy, okay? And you'll see the way that it's gripped the table that it's sitting on. It's got some really, really good feet, and this is really important. So many subwoofer manufacturers invest in kind of the basics of the woofer and the amplification, but they don't think about the cabinet or the end user as far as where they're putting it. So they have these awesome feet pre tap for the big spikes and with a big rubber pad on the bottom. Also, as I tilt it back, you'll see the massive port. This extends all the way through to the top of the cabinet to ensure that the woofer can breathe easily, but still the port will never chuff or create its own sort of woodwind instrument noise. So the four feet grip brilliantly to any sort of uh, hardwood surface, as you can see, and it's absolutely awesome. Now, before we look at the drive units and some of the other obvious things, it's important to understand that ELAC have made no compromise in the cabinet construction despite this relatively budget price point. First of all, you'll see these sort of curves. Now, curves in cabinets are far more expensive than hard corners. Hard corners are created by just sort of cutting, chafing, and then folding, ensuring the laminate sort of holds it all together, and a bit of glue, and away you go but it leaves weak points and potentially internally elements of reflection and other things that can be eliminated if manufacturers invest a little bit more in the cabinet itself and start to curve things. Now it also has a second feature that you'd end up with no sharp edges that could get knocked or scratched and it looks a little bit more pleasant in a space rather than having hard square edges. Okay, nevertheless, let's have a look. Firstly, we'll see the four rubber uh, bungs that are associated with the grill. We'll see a centralized ELAC logo and again it's that two-tone. There's a little bit of a protective plastic thing over the front uh, to stop it from being scratched. What I alluded to and what I want to pause and have a look at is this ring around it. Now of course it's a plastic ring to cover off some of the uh, functionality associated with bolting a big drive unit into a cabinet. But even the ridging here has been extremely well thought out. This technology and technique was utilised first in, say, the Vila range of bookshelf speakers and floor standards. These hugely expensive speakers saw this sort of ridging to help manage the, uh, the waveform as it exits the drive unit into the room. And they've trickled it down into a budget subwoofer, so it's awesome to see. We'll also see a really high excursion uh, drive unit and big angulars to be able to keep things under control. 
At no point is this losing grip or control and massive magnet structure in behind. Again, a, a 700, well, peaks at 700 watt amplifier, this thing is going to produce astonishing frequencies, down to 24 hertz as implied. Okay. Spinning it around, we see that the box itself is essentially a cube. Whatever reasonable dimensions it is here, is essentially here. Now, of course, they've added huge bracing elements, and the cabinet itself is really, really heavy and dense. It's wonderful to see, again, in a really budget product. Looking at the back, we see some of the simplicity. Gone are all the complicated dials and knobs because the app itself is going to work with the bash amplification to work with its setup. So all we see is some basic power inputs that's fused, a rocker switch at the back for on and off, and then the basic inputs associated with connecting this to either a stereo system or via the uh, right-hand red LFE input to a theatre amplifier. You see above it the ability to reset the unit, then it's associated with its pairing and other things with the app, and a rear USB for software updating and servicing. Now the USB can potentially provide enough voltage and current for a wireless subwoofer receiver if required. There's also a basic rotary encoder for the volume control. Clearly, turning it this way turns it up, and the other way turns it down. Now apart from electrical safety certification and some scannable information about the uh, serial number, it's pretty much it on the back of the unit itself. So, there we have it. The middle of the range PS350, 12 inch, 350 watt active subwoofer, unboxed here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.